right, we are here today with a special customer and uh, he's brought in a really beautiful uh, grandfather clock and uh, I'll just let him introduce himself and we'll talk about this clock and what's going to be happening with it here. So, my, name, my name's Jim and uh, we have had the clock since 1972 and it was brought over to Canada from Scotland in a container full of antiques. Really cool. And the people who brought it over, they didn't want it, so they gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> you were the lucky ones. <laughs> yes, and we've had, it, we've had it 50 years and it needs to be repaired. Yeah, yeah, it needs lots of repairs. So it's about 1850. They told us it was about 1850 and I did some research mm -hmm. and with the pendulum and the style of pendulum with the flat one inch and the, the brass coated iron, mm -hmm. It dates it around between 1830 and 1850. Oh, okay, very cool. And the, the size of the face, yep. and the way the, the four corner pictures come together, that also dates it between 1830 and 1850. Yeah. So we're cool. pretty good there. So you were telling me about uh, where it was made. Made in, in Scotland. The village. Yeah. And the doctors told us that it was uh, a farm clock. Yep. A country clock. Yeah. It was probably it was made in a village from three or four different people. Yeah. Probably farmers in the off season. Yeah. That's what they do because there's no marks. There's no maker's marks anywhere. Yeah. So there would have been like a carpenter, yeah, carpenter a blacksmith, an a artist, clock, an artist, because yeah. there's hand painted, yeah. which we'll show you guys in a second. But and, and that's exactly what they did back then, especially in the country. Yeah. They had a little community that made things, which is really cool. <laughs> and, and, and clocks were, were pretty important. Yeah. The early clocks, especially over there, only had one hand. Oh, really? They only had the hour hand. Oh. There was no need for minutes. Yes, who needs minutes? <laughs> who needs That's minutes? how I feel too. <laughs> we should go back to that. <laughs> now we have seconds and Yeah, what do we need seconds for? Oh man, seconds. it's so crazy. But they started uh, learning where the, the hour hand was and saying, yep. oh, it's, it's, it's half past. It's, yep, you know. half past. That's but, where uh, the saying comes from, I bet. And the face is Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. And the number four is four eyes. It's not my That's cool. We'll show you that in a second. Yeah. But we're going to start from the top and work our way right down. <laughs> Starting with the case. So this is the top here. And uh, it's got the original glass, which he very carefully packaged. Did a really awesome job. Even made a crate for it to come here. And uh, we really want to make sure we're careful with stuff like this. Because it's definitely a valuable antique in my opinion. Yeah, and there are some issues inside. Um, we've got a cracked uh, panel here that where the clock face would sit into. And at some point it was stripped and yep. there are some marks and some of the finishes is uh, missing and stuff like that. So we'll be taking care of that for sure. Um, I think there's a hinge issue on this door as well. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, and the frame needs a little bit of work, but the glazing is intact really well on yeah. the glass and it looks very excellent and in, in my opinion and uh yeah so that's that's pretty great um other than that this here is not original so we're going to be making something that um a little bit more like a finial That'd be uh, nice. That'd be yeah nice. something that looks you know we'll do a little bit of research and find something that we can turn on the lathe that looks a little bit more like what's supposed to be here someone did a nice job just kind of yeah. uh, putting something in its place but we can do a little bit better than that and uh, yeah, so there's just, you know, other little things that aren't super, super important, but we'll address uh, in terms of, you know, cracks on the panels, uh, making sure all the trim is, is, you know, not loose and doing its thing. And, you know, we don't want it to, to continue to fall apart. We want to give it some stability. Now, I didn't know there were these little fabric oh, yeah. um, inserts yeah. here. That's pretty interesting. They seem to be disintegrated. Yeah, so maybe we can talk about putting, you know, a new a new tweed in yeah. to keep it the dust out of the clock, I think is the main yeah, thing for that. Yeah, that's all it does. And also it's kind of a little speaker for the clock. So Yeah, there's a bell, a nice bell. Yeah, so you can kind of hear the the bell that goes and uh, it looks nice. Looks like you did a really nice job shining the the brass. <laughs> that looks beautiful. I don't have to do that. <laughs> but anyways, other than that, this piece is in pretty good condition up top. It is. So we'll just lay that down and kind of shuffle it aside. A little bit delicate. So I'll move you guys a little closer here. So moving on to the case here, 
This is where that top piece slides onto. This looks like this was the original cover. Right? Yeah, so probably a darker, the whole yeah. thing was a darker wood it, at it some was. point. But you know what, you don't have to worry about changing that. Yeah. Just do a nice finish on the outside. Yes, and you want to keep the this original golden oak, as, right? As close as you can get, yeah. Yep, yeah. But More I to think the you're going to have to go a bit darker. Yeah, just to kind of give it a... The, cover the blemish. <laughs> give it a little bit of a cleanup kind of thing. Yeah, so on this case, we've got the panel that's actually not split, which a lot of them are, which is nice that it's still intact here. And uh, the door is going to... I think these hinges were okay. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so these guys are okay here. Um, but we do have a little bit of splitting in the in the frame and then along the sides, on the bottom, on the other side, I believe there's a crack. Uh, but that whole bottom is a, is a different story. So this is probably the original color here, yeah, yeah. which is really pretty. It's kind of like a- It is actually, but- A brown cherry mahogany. So and, you can just clean that, leave, all, leave yeah, the inside the same color. For sure. And just do the outside. Keep the original inside. Oh, I like that actually. Yeah, it's like, well, we can do that on the whole thing. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know we can. But anyways, you've got them all shined up, really pretty little barrels on the hinges there. And uh, this is not in bad shape at all. And the trim work looks really good there too. And then we get down to this guy. Wow. Yeah, so he's got a big split in the center where the panels have shrunk. And uh, there's a piece of molding missing here and on the side. Um, we do have a little bit of a mismatched foot situation yeah. here. Yeah, there's something happening. So this was probably a replacement. This, um, I think this corner's had a bad time. Yeah, I think. All the way through. I think we've had a hard life on this bottom <laughs> piece here. So yeah, there's the crack here, and you yeah. can see that a little bit of water damage has happened on this back. This panel's uh, warped quite badly. So we're gonna work to put this back together the way it should be. And uh, I'll just take this apart here. I'll put the camera up and I'll show you inside. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this off here so I can show you. This piece of wood here that's stuck with the top half is actually supposed to be laminated. Yeah. Uh, on here, so it's snapped off. So we'll re uh, reposition that on to there so these two sections can kind of fit down onto each other. Yeah. They're not supposed to come apart. No. Um, there's a couple of glue blocks in here missing. We have uh, for connecting those two sections together. So we'll fix all of that. And then inside there, you can see the bottom panel is just really warped. So we might the, have to. The weights fell on it. Yeah, that could definitely be one of the issues. It's just kind of hung up there. Yeah. So we'll probably end up having to replace that board yeah. um, and just do something to clean it up. But I'd really like to make another foot like this. So we'll probably maybe carve a foot to match just to keep that old profile and uh, get it looking back. It looks like this was a back foot. Yeah. And this was the old foot and they switched them. <laughs> Who knows what happened there? We'll figure it out. So there's that trim that's missing. Looks like kind of a half um, round over with, with a crease. Yeah. So we'll just make that as best we can to the original. And uh, we do have cracks on the edges here on the frame. So this guy's gonna need the most work, I would say, out of um, the whole piece. And this is usually, you know, where the damage on things gets bad next to the floor. Yep. So I'll just put that down. Now, these beautiful weights, I just oh, want to show you guys. <laughs> there's, there's one weight bigger than the other in all these clocks. Yeah. So, so the heavier, bigger weight runs the chimes or the bell. Yep. The other weight, the, the smaller one, runs the time, the, the ah, hands. Ah, I see, I see. The, the workings on these clocks, there's two separate sides, two separate gear trains. Yep, yep. One, one for the chimes and one for the, the, the hands. And these would have been handmade. Yep. Like, look at the discrepancies in the wave. And oh, for sure. That's just so charming. <laughs> uh, I think this was handmade. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we'll get a close look at this guy too. You can see how the, uh, the brass was hammered down around. Yep this uh, yeah, weight of piece, iron. the cast iron, yeah. So that's really beautiful. And you did a good job of safely taking it oh. here too. <laughs> so now that we've kind of talked about all of that and what we're gonna need to do, um, we can show you this guy. Oh yeah. Come on over here. Tell me about what, what uh, you found out about this piece here. 
So it's Rob Roy's cave. Rob Roy was Scotland's uh, Robin Hood. Oh, yep. And the cave was where he went to hide all the time when he was being chased. I see the words there. Yeah, Rob yep. Roy's cave. And then <laughs> each corner is uh, England, Scotland, Wales. Yeah. And uh, Ireland. Beautiful, beautiful. And there's a little tombstone here. Oh. And I don't know why, and it looks like it's close to Ireland. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's related to the famine. Okay. In that time frame? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, and there's little writings, and I'll give you guys close-ups as we work on this. This is going to be something that we're, um, we're not doing, you know, restructuring or anything, but yeah. it's actually got a varnish. I don't know if you've uh, watched, you know, Baumgartner or any of the paint restoration channels on YouTube, but a lot of these old paintings were sealed with a varnish, and back then they didn't know... You know, they didn't have anything else to use, um, and it yellows quite a bit. We have different types of varnishes these days that protect and don't yellow over time. So someone did try to clean at some point. It wasn't you. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and had, you know, taken off the old varnish. So we're going to be using a really mild solvent, um, first cleaning off the grime and, and then using the mild solvent to get this yellow film off of everything. These colors, when we do that, they are going to pop and uh, we'll be able to reseal that and uh, make sure it's it's protected and and everything's intact because there's some really beautiful metallics in here that we'll just really really carefully uh, work around and see if we can get you know all these very orange filtered um, areas to pop again because they're actually colors under that yellow filter yeah. so that's going to be a really fun thing to to do and to watch so stay tuned for that. Take a look at the number four. And I did some research on it and there's a dozen, at least a dozen reasons why. And every clockmaker seems to have a dis different reason mm -hmm. why they use an IV or... Yep. Uh, and some of it goes back to the education level and IV and V requires math. Or right. Addition and, and oh, okay. Yeah. And most people at this time frame couldn't even write their name. Oh. Because this would have been more office. of like a yeah. small, more yeah. Yeah. uneducated village yeah. kind of thing. That makes a lot of sense. And then they say the the the, the four eyes match more with that, and it makes it symmetrical. Yep. So you have four eyes, and then you have four V's, and then you have four X's. Oh, okay. So even an aesthetic reason. Yeah. So that's uh, another reason. But there's a dozen reasons. And there'll never be a solution. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. That's so cool. I'm so excited to work on this. Yeah. And I'm so happy that you brought it to me. Yeah. Um, we'll be getting it uh, on the workbench in a few months. Or next month, I think, March. And this is where you wind, you wind, yeah. wind, you wind the, 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 the weight for the, for the bell. And yep. then you wind the weight for the hands on yes. the other side. And, yeah. and they both come up. That's awesome. It is awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, telling us all the things you learned and researched about this piece. It's kind of a treat because I never really get uh, that kind of stuff on camera. So I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to, to the stories and we will uh, work through it and, and add another story to this clock's history. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be, we'll be uh, seeing him again at the end of this. <laughs> Okay, so the first piece I really want to get a uh, handle on is the base. This is actually supposed to be attached to the trunk, which is the middle section that has the pendulum. And uh, it's actually broken off from the back here. You can see a split right here. This is supposed to be glued onto uh, the backboard. And this piece is right here on the base of the trunk. So these two pieces split at some point. Probably just uh, maybe a little bit of an impact. There were some missing glue blocks, so maybe the support wasn't there anymore. But uh, I'm gonna try to get that piece off of the trunk and re-glue it onto here so that it's nice and sturdy. And then add some uh, some good glue blocks and I mean we'll be using high glue because that's what was used here before um, but we'll just be scraping off um, old old glue block areas and getting some fresh high glue uh, everywhere so that it's 
good and sturdy from that point. Um, the other thing that this piece needs is, as you saw before, this big split in the center here. So the wood has shrunk over the years and pulled away from the lamination point, which would have been right here. And so we're not going to, you know, take this apart and try to put it back together the way it was. We're gonna to need to actually add a piece of oak into here. So we'll be getting a piece of quarter sawn oak that we can splice in uh, for that repair, plane it, and try not to disturb too much of uh, the beautiful patina doing that. Also, there are a few pieces of trim on the corners that are missing, big chunks out here. Um, this, uh, a lot of the trim that we have is loose and needs to be re-secured re so it doesn't go missing or break off. Um, and then the base, uh, we've got four different legs. I believe this was a back leg at some point that someone moved up to the front and this is the broken old front leg. So I'm going to put this leg back here where I believe it was in the first place. And then I'm going to be making another leg that matches the front leg here, because this is the original. So um, it looks like at some point this whole section just kind of broke off and uh, they just sawed it and stuck it on here. Who knows what happened? And obviously we're gonna need to replace this uh, base plywood here. It's too water damaged to salvage. So that will need to be taken out and, and replaced. And then we've got a banding, uh, this banding right here. And uh, we will repair the broken areas, but we have an entire half of it missing. So there's half of it missing here. And then this whole side here is missing. Um, so we'll need to replicate that banding and uh, it, it's not too, too difficult and I, I hope I can get it pretty close. So that'll be good. I am going to take this back panel off for all of these repairs and just make sure everything is sturdy because this is the base of the clock. It needs to be uh, stable and then uh, clean up all this glue inside here and this edge so that we can re-glue the, the trunk back on. But that'll just give me access to the inside to uh, redo everything. So that's what I'll do first. I'll get this back off and uh, get it loose and then uh, take these legs off so I can start thinking about that and uh, just get this thing pieced out so I can start uh, getting my head around what I'm going to do first and what needs to happen. So let me grab some tools. All right, so there are some newer nails. Um, looks like replacement nails that are in here. So I'll just be aware that those might be a little bit more stuck than the other ones. So I'm just going to get my pry bar in and pop these guys out.
Okay, so I've got all, all three of the legs off that I want to take off here. And these cross braces are pretty beat up and very loose, so we'll get those off. We got the trim off here. And uh, I'll probably use the half piece that was on the front on the other side. I want to keep as much of the original as I can. And then I'll use this to uh, create more for the front. So it's just nice one piece in the front with no joint. So I'll keep those over there. So I'm going to get these cross braces out. They've got nails coming in here. They've been over nailed here. And I'm thinking at least this back one for sure I'm going to replace. Um, it's just there's too many holes right where it needs to hold on to everything right here. So I'm going to probably put a new piece in here. And uh, the front one I'm going to try to keep because it's not as bad. And it has the original leg still attached to it. So I'd like to keep that there. Um, so I'm just going to pry this away from the side. Just too many nails over too many years. Yeah, so you can see, um, I don't know if maybe there was a solid piece down here at one point. I don't think so. But anyways, there's just quite a few um, nails that have gone through, a lot of splits in this piece. So I'm going to just mill up a new piece out of some restoration wood that I have, not new lumber. Uh, and then we can get some fresh joints to make sure we've got a good base to attach the legs to. And most of these nails down here are toast um, because of just sitting in water. They're all rusty, so I won't be able to use these ones again. Even some of the nice original ones, they're just broken, so... We'll just have to say goodbye to those. So I'm gonna get that apart, make a piece, and then we can uh, get this back together and sturdy here. I'm gonna also take out um, this piece and re-glue it with some new corner blocks here. It's not gonna be very hard since it's just coming out while I talk here. And uh, then we can cut a new piece of plywood for um, the cover there and uh, kind of work our way from the ground up. So there's the original leg that's in the front. That's the profile. So I'm going to use this one to, to draw out a profile for a new one in the front. And then we've got this leg and this leg, even though they're a little bit different. Um, I'm going to say they're similar enough that I'm going to use them for the back legs because again, I'm trying to keep as much as the original um, pieces with the cabinet as I can. And then it'll get one new leg here. So not too many new additions. Um, so now that that is off, I'm also going to, I've got the glue warming up so that I can get this trim back up here. glued back on here but I'm going to clean up all the glue inside here because this is where the the trunk attaches so let me get my scraper going All right, so I've got all the glue scraped off that surface that attacks to the trunk. I've got pretty much all of the um, corner blocks out and I'm gonna clean them all up so we can get fresh glue surfaces. And now that those are off, this is barely hanging together. So I am gonna go ahead and take apart the sides um, because they're supposed to be glued on these and they're just barely hanging on. Got like one nail left here for this side. Okay, so 
all this glue up here um, has all let go so we can scrape that off and get a new mounting point up here same thing on the other side get the rest of these nails out and uh, fix this crack here as well and now that I'm this far I'm debating whether I add a strip to the side here or if I keep it where it is So I could glue these two surfaces together and you'd have the same old wood here, except for on the side where there's a broken piece anyways. So I could fix two birds with one stone. So I think I might actually do that. Big nail bent over there, so I couldn't get that off while it was there. All right, so I'll get the glue, I think it's I'm just going to be using old brown glue and you can get this at Lee Valley and it's basically just tied glue and I'm just going to use a little bead runs out quick and uh, get it on both sides not worried about making a mess with this stuff really easy to clean up There we go. Couple of older nails that I kept here that should And these ones are not really loose, so we'll leave them alone. So that's that little repair taken care of. So let me find some uh, nice old oak pieces and we'll do these repairs here. Okay, so I kept this old oak around for repairs like this. This is from trim in a house that was over 150 years old, so comes in handy for stuff like this. So I just cut some uh, small pieces to do these repairs with. So I'll start on this corner here. And not gonna take off any more than I need to, but it looks like I'm gonna go right to this point here. And I'm just gonna come in at an angle like this, because it's always nice to do an angle for a joint instead of straight. And I'll need to do a bead under here too for that woodworm damage. Okay, and then I'm just going to separate it from here. Right at that miter. Looks like the woodworm kind of is the reason why these are so chewed up because I can see how damaged it is right there. And it's really, really soft, which is not what it should be. And lots of little sawdust and stuff in here. 
There we go, it's a good fit. All right, so I'm just going to sand it a little bit more before I put it on there, uh, just to bring it in a wee bit so I don't have to do too much work on the cabinet. And then uh, we'll need to make a piece for down here as well. Okay, so I got it flipped upside down now. I can clean off the bottom here and I'm just trying to think, where does it stop being? Super, super spongy. I think I'm gonna start in right there. And I'm gonna go pretty deep because this whole area is affected. I'll just give it a little sand and then we'll get all these glued on. All right, so I got the new little leg made, made the back piece um, that the other legs go on, the two back legs, got all the corner blocks doing their thing, got the trim fixed on the base. So now I'm just going to work on making a new trim. And I picked up this piece of oak trim from the mill shop and it has the exact same profile except for we just need to cut off the bottom and the top so in between here you can kind of see if this was just to come straight down and this was a little skinnier here you would have your profile so I'm basically just going to be cutting off the top here and here and we'll have it a little bit of shaping on the round part but that's not too hard and uh I'm wondering if I should make just a whole new piece on the one side because it's completely gone here. So that piece 
is right here, but it is so brittle and does not fit back together. It has a nail uh, hole that's kind of split the, the wood and it's been glued a couple times. So it's I'm not really sure if I want to get that back together because it looks pretty gnarly. Even if I squish it together, the fibers really don't come. So I either repair this piece or I go ahead and make more of the new trim. And at the same time, this one is not quite long enough for the side where it starts to get damaged here. So I'm thinking I should probably just make a whole length of new trim. And uh, that way it'll all be the same exactly. It's unfortunate that we don't have the original in good shape enough to, to keep it, but I think that's the best decision here. So I'm gonna run this through the table saw uh, on both sides, and then we'll do a little bit of shaping. Okay, so there it is off the table saw. You can see it just has a little bit of a square edge here. So I'm just going to, it's barely noticeable. So I'm just gonna actually scrape that off and then give it a sand. And uh, you can see how well it matches with the old trim right there. It is a little bit thicker and I could send it through the uh, planer, which I probably will, just to take off about a, um, looks like a 16th. So I'll do that, um, but it's, the profile's perfect. So just uh, smooth it off and then we just have to cut it to fit. Here we go. So we got the, the width down. And the profile. So yeah, it's a trick that um, I've learned over the years. There's a lot of profiles that you can uh, buy and you just have to kind of modify them if you can. Sometimes you can't, you have to make it from hand, but um, that's okay too. It's sometimes fun. So I'll just clean it up, give it a sand. And then uh, when I have the base back together, we can fit it on there. All right, so now I'm dealing with the front panel that was cracked and I've decided to laminate the front back together and then add to the side because there were pieces missing there anyways. Uh, but there are a few issues here. Um, one being the nails that were holding this on have split and these ends are flared out, which is not creating an awesome joint right there. And the other issue is there's some pretty serious woodworm damage on the other side. So this basically just fell apart in my hands. Um, it looked like someone had tried to repair it once and uh, basically now it's just completely eaten and gone. I don't see any bugs right now uh, and I will pour some alcohol in there. But basically what I'm gonna try to do is see if there's some good wood further in here. Uh, saw these back and laminate um, the, them back together with good wood, which means we'll be losing even more width. Um, and then I'll probably end up, uh, I'm gonna try to glue these in and, and then I'll have to joint this. So I gotta do that first. And then we'll see how much we're gonna need on the end here because um, we're taking quite a bit off to do all those repairs. But I still think that's the best case scenario uh, for what we got here and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Otherwise, um, this will break again because there's basically just sponge here, there's no wood. And uh, I wanna make sure that we've got a nice lamination. So this way the wood that they chose to go together can go back together. But um, the other thing is I could just saw this right off where these cracks are, but I think maybe that's a good idea. I'm not 100% sure. Because I don't think they're actually gonna glue up really great because they're under so much tension just from dry splitting around that nail and then living like that for a long time. So I might just cut it and uh, then I've got my lamination right, right away. 
Anyways, I'm gonna poke around in here and I'm just gonna, you know, dig to see. Looks, it feels like I do have solid wood at a certain point. So I'm just gonna start putting this through the table saw and taking off as little as possible and see how far I need to go to get to good wood that I can re-glue this with. Okay, so I did have to take off probably three eighths of an inch on each side. Still has some holes in it, but this wood is all nice and hard here. So I'm gonna try gluing it just so I can save as much wood as I can. And uh, see how it works out. If it doesn't work, I can still cut it off uh, later. So it, you know, it's not like I'm making up my mind irreversibly here. I'm just gonna get some of this hide glue in the crack as much as I can. Okay, I have been gluing panels. All sides had major woodworm damage going right through the middle of them. So I pretty much broke them in half, um, sawed out all of the pocky wood from these nasty buggers and uh, re-laminated the pieces together. So I'll be adding wood to all of these pieces. Um, and it's just really important that the panels are stable down there because they're a major part of the structure. There's not an inner frame or anything. It's the panels that hold things together and the corner blocks. So we'll uh, mill up some oak to add onto the sides later. It's not going to go to the wood burning pile. No, not the wood burning pile now. No. 